Hi guys, welcome to today's video. Hope you're all doing well. My name is Annie and today, as you read in the title of the video that you just clicked on, today we are going to be checking out Les Seraphim's new title track being called Easy. That is a title track from their third mini album of the same name. So this mini album has how many songs? I had it written down and I'm forgot it. This mini album has, where is it? Ah, oh, yeah. Has five tracks in total being Good Bones, Easy, Swan Song, Smart, We Got So Much. And I've noticed lately that we have many more K-pop groups releasing mini albums instead of full-length albums. And it is always with like five to six songs. So sometimes we have even shorter track lists than that. And the songs are rather short as well, going from like two to three minutes tops, which is changing and it goes to show a little bit like the impact of social media, mainly TikTok with like the much shorter content being also an, of an impact to the music industry and like the attention that we can give to groups. But that's not really only related to the Seraphim, but to many other groups out there. That's besides the point. Going back to the Seraphim, um, with the release of the teaser for this comeback, they got themselves a little bit in hot waters because like everyone was a little bit shocked by the fashion <laughs> because like they were showing their underwear or very very short shorts. It was mainly regarding the outfit of Yunjin and Taewon, not so much the other members. but is like bound to happen with such a famous group like with every single one of their new comebacks they get more and more popular more people are talking about them than ever so it is normal the other discourse that i've seen online mainly on tiktok is the fact that not only for easy but i think it is mainly regarding the second song smart that i've seen so many videos of their showcase because like my TikTok algorithm just feeds them to me and I'm like, no, 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 I will do a reaction and review to it. I can't watch it. But the community is really talking about like the influence and the usage of like Afro beats and it being really like taking inspiration from the song that became super, super popular this past summer that was Water by Tyler. I'm sorry if I'm mispronouncing her name. I only see it written. I really love that song and she even um, received a Grammy not so long ago so it was really really big and I feel like now because it has become popular let's say in the western uh, side and market that more K-pop idols are doing it as well but they are not really like understanding the depth of just using a style and not really a style but a genre that is very much so associated with the community. Also like K-pop has done it with hip-hop as well but um, sometimes is like the one argument that I was like okay I sort of agree with it is like they are taking influences from communities and countries and cultures that they would never go there to do a show. So it feels a little bit like a little bit like disconnected and that the fact that they are perhaps just doing it because it's popular, that it's trendy and nothing more. But I would love to hear your own thoughts and opinions about it all. I'm not the best or most well educated on the subject to talk more in depth about it. So if you have your own thoughts and opinions about it all, tell me in the comments down below, please. Now let's talk about this comeback. So according to Sampi, Easy is an attractive song that combines catchy R&B style vocals with an addictive melody. The song contains the Lothar determination to make things easy, even in tough situations. So it's another song <laughs> about going through tough times. Ah, also the other sort of... Um, I was going to say scandal, but it, controversy was the fact that they danced in front of a church and all the references to religion in a way. We will check it all out, but apparently it is a church that is known for 
people like or groups like my chemical romance have done videos uh, music videos in front of it as well so apparently is like all blown out of proportion but that it, like i can see both sides that it can be seen as a little bit disrespectful and on the other side it can be seen as like blown out of proportion because a lot of groups have done the same thing in the past but now enough said let's jump right into it and check out easy i know that they have done a performance video as well but i don't think i will watch it or i'll watch it on the side oh yeah we definitely have like the church it's all distorted i like the effect that they added there like even with the previous song they had a little bit of a reference to religion they are looking really nice i love their outfits and they are very like sporty I love the glittery tears. They are looking so nice, like their outfits and the styling, so nice. The choreo. The instrumental is very simplistic as well. I don't get like the vampire teeth in the storyline. The choreo is so intense, but they make it look like easy. <laughs> I know that this scene became like controversial as well when the song was banned because of it. I'm not like a big fan of the auto tune in this section. Unche doesn't sing quite a lot in this comeback. It's all this story of like it's a storm or something. Like the purple extensions? No. It's an old. It's a very short song. And very monotone as well. I must, I must admit, I don't see the connection, like there's no like storyline that we know. Like they're just dancing in various shots and looking very nice. Don't get me wrong, they look stunning, but there's no like plot going on. They are very empowering, very confident, and it is their entire concept to like fearless, let's hurt them and everything and that I enjoy and I think they pull it off really well and they make everything look easy as well because they have a very very intense choreo but they do it so seamlessly and it feels very fluid very like smooth and I like that quite a lot the song in itself it is catchy for sure and it's definitely one of those songs that I can see being use and become like a trend on tiktok as well because of how intense the choreo is and so on it is very monotone there's not like one part with, with the exception of the make it look easy and so on that can get a little bit catchier or get stuck in your head the rest not so much it is more like rap based even though they sometimes play a little bit with auto-tune for their stylistic usage 
which I'm not really the biggest fan of. And it is a very like almost, almost one note song. I like it, not my favorite song from La Seraphim, I must say. It is catchy, but it's nothing out there. I can see the different influences that they take from the Western market and how I've sort of source music. I'm going to say La Source. <laughs> it's not a French label. Um, but <laughs> how source music wants to like market them more to the Western market. That I see and I get it, but it's definitely not so much so like my cup of tea all that much. I like it, but I feel like, yeah, they're not really the type of song that I will like listen to over and over again. It's enjoyable. What I don't get is the sort of symbolism that they add with the church and like the veil and like all those more like religious references i don't get it and even with um unforgiven they had those um symbols those sort of like that symbolism once again and i sort of get the idea that it still has a little bit too much the connection with religion um sometimes a little bit too much for my taste because like i get it that you can be like the bad girl or do your own thing and not care about like hell or heaven and stuff like that but after a while i'm just like yeah it's like if it was like 20 years ago i guess i would like understand how shocking it is now it just feels a little bit mm, unnecessary <laughs> but it is aesthetically pleasing i just don't see like how it is integrated in their whole like storyline nevertheless i must say easy for me is a very enjoyable track not my favorite from la seraphim including the b-sides it is very one note very monotone with a simplistic instrumental their vocals are nice they're more like focusing on rapping or singing but very like softly i was sort of surprised that unze didn't sing as much as did she did in the previous title track with Kazuha definitely taking a little bit more of the spotlight with Unjin and Chewon, Sakurai was like usual having two to three like lines um, sprinkled in all throughout the song but yeah I don't have anything else to say I like it but it's nothing outstanding that I'm like oh my god Le Seraphim I was actually quite excited for this track but yeah <laughs> and don't get me wrong like i like the group i think they are very talented and that they express that confidence really well and we have seen time and time again like they make the choreo look effortless and simple and easy but it's not at all and they are very charismatic very powerful dancers as well they're oh my god their bodies <laughs> like they have been working out like crazy and they've done it in the past as well but here it's all the much more like noticeable I love the fashion as well and yeah the next song that we are going to check out is from their showcase and it is the song smart and this was the song that got a lot of attention not only because the way they perform the way they move their bodies is just like hypnotizing from the bits that i have seen on tiktok especially taewon the way she moves my god, the girl, <laughs> I don't know who, where she learned to do that, but she, it's so fluid and the choreo is very, very impressive as well. But it was also a lot of people talking about how it takes reference or it takes a lot of inspiration from Tyler and her song Water that was really popular, how they are really like focusing on trends, like I said in the intro of this video. And even regarding Eun's hair, the fact that she's still a minor and she's performing songs that are very much so provocative and sometimes not something that you can expect from a 17 year old i think she's 17 so yeah i don't really know exactly what i make of it because yes the members like taewon and Injin definitely are more dressed in a provocative way if we can call it that i can't really say the same thing for for Unze, but then the moves yeah, I don't know. I'll have to watch it. I just seen some bits on TikTok, like the chorus mainly, so we get to see. So now, without further ado, let's check out Smart Boy. I'm a 
I see it. <laughs> I see like all the remarks. You do it really well, but this is a pre-recorded performance. They are not really singing live, I don't think. Or sometimes some of the members, like for example, Taylor's vocal picked through. It's definitely like with the afro beat and stuff like that and the way they put like pronounce smarter The choreo looks really nice and the instrumental is definitely catchy Like, for example, if Unja did that, I would understand the criticism. Here she sings a little bit more. She sometimes sings live, Unja. I don't know what to think about it. I love when Taran raps. She can do it all. I can see this become so viral because it's definitely super super catcher, catchy. The ad libs are really nice as well. They look so good. Let's talk about it all. On one side, I get the criticism. Completely get it. I get why people are making all those references because in fact we have a song that even the way they pronounce smarter, um, it is very much so like in the sort of same vibe as the song Water from Thailand and all those songs like that done by uh, people of color and with that R&B Afrobeat vibe to it, I can definitely see it. And like I said previously, I'm not the most well educated because I'm white. I'm from, from like Portugal and Switzerland, so I have no right to talk about it all but just looking at it I can completely feel that it feels almost like they are doing this because it is a trend not really understanding the genre of the song what it is making reference to where it is from and why they are doing it it feels almost like it is just like another trend let's do it on the other hand I like the song <laughs> I like it a lot uh, because I love those other songs that I've mentioned as well. So it's not like I love one and not the other. I'm pretty consistent in <laughs> the types of genres that I like. I like the way they performed it. I think the choreo is so damn catchy that this song will definitely become viral. And I've seen already a lot of different TikToks. For how long it will be viral, I don't know. But so far, I've seen the impact of it. And... It is La Seraphim. They are a very, very popular group since. Um... Anti fragile. <laughs> I had to do the entire chorus inside my brain. But since that song, they've become so, so, so popular with Fearless as well. But then with Karam leaving and so on. I'm not about to redo the entire history of La Seraphim. <laughs> Rest assured. But uh, still, I do think that. Um, since they've become so popular, they are more prone to criticism, More, they have more eyeballs on them to see every single little mistake, little 
thing that is missed. So with all of that in mind, I'm trying to sort of like when it comes to the more like revealing outfits and showing the underwear and so on, I'm like, Ugh, we've seen much worse <laughs> in the Western I was going to say the Western K-pop industry, but in the Western music industry, especially it is the adult members doing that. If it wasn't Cher, I couldn't understand the criticism. It's not. The dance moves are definitely more on the sexier vibe, which I can understand why it can be a little bit iffy. All those references to religion for the previous track, easy. I see it. But, like... Like, it's a mishmash of a lot of different things. I think I will continue to listen to their songs, but more like casually, like I have done so far. Uh, there are some songs like Anti-Fragile and uh, Unforgiven, or the B-side from that era that is very lengthy, and I'm always forgetting the name of it, the wife, the blue beard, something, something. Like, they are catchy, I still listen to them, but we can sort of criticize a group and bring awareness to different things and still sometimes listen to some of the songs it really depends to what extent they go in terms of like the the scandal or the controversy so far i like it's still a little bit good for me to continue checking it, them out let's see how it evolves so far i like smart easy like i mentioned so we'll still have another song to check out and my computer is always like dying on me, like, come on, keep up, keep up, keep up. The other song that we have to check out is Swan Song. It is a, ah, oh, it's original stage. So it's from their YouTube channel. It's not from a music show. I won't be checking out performances from music shows anymore. Like, no, because <laughs> every single time my video gets blocked and I don't want to spend countless hours re-editing it, like lowering the opacity, cutting every single thing for them to block it again. So yeah, let's check out this one song, shall we? I love their outfits. Yet again, I don't think this is, is actually live, but more like a pre-recorded performance. I love Sakura's hairstyle. I say this, but I'm still not sure. I like the choreo quite a lot. Hyunjin, she's always like bending backwards. I really like to see them dancing together. That was so nice, like the ripple effect. Ooh, we have black and white feathers. That's so nice. Wow. 
the fans going crazy. So Swan Song is really cute. I like the aesthetic of it. It is much softer than the previous ones. We have another version of the Seraphim songs that I quite enjoy. I think it's really nice, really cute. I don't think it is one of those songs that are like very memorable. I don't think it is one of those songs that I will be listening to over and over again. It is cute, it is enjoyable. If it comes on, I will be listening to it, but it is not one of those songs I'm like, no, 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 I have to listen to this once again. <laughs> so yeah, I feel like I'm a bit mm, stricter or meaner with La Seraphim, but it's not at all my goal. I'm just giving you my thoughts. That's why you clicked on it. I like La Seraphim as a group. I do think that they are very talented, very strong, and I will always stick around to know what they plan on doing further. But for this comeback, I must say, Smart is definitely my jam. I like it quite a lot with everything that was said before. Um, easy, it is nice, it is a little bit catchy, it is like, but it is mainly the choreo that makes it impactful and the song on its own, not so much. And then Swan Song is cute, is nice, it shows another side of them, but it's not something that I will go out of my way to listen to. Those are all my thoughts. I hope if you are a fan of the Seraphim, you can understand my criticism. It's not to say that they aren't talented, or even when I say that they are not singing live, it's nothing like mean or bad about it, it's just that sometimes it is known in the K-pop industry that, like, first and foremost, they cannot do those crazy moves and at the same time sound super super stable. It's not possible. So sometimes they decide to do with, like, the backing track or pre-recorded vocals and there's nothing wrong with it but sometimes when they've recorded live and like dance and sing on top of it and you know that they are not singing sometimes I feel like oh, let's not pretend um, because I know they can sing really well live so that's why I mention it and but also because sometimes people don't know how to make the difference uh, or how to see the difference between really singing live or having a very loud backing track or just having the backing track and singing on top. Some of them, sometimes I could listen or hear singing a bit on top of the backing track, some others not so much, but it is understandable. So most of the time they do rely more on the backing track for the first week as they are a little bit more stressed and they want the song to do well. So that is completely understandable. So now guys, it is your turn to tell me in the comments down below what did you think about it all? Did you like it? Did you not? What did you think about like the controversies regarding the songs? Are you a big fan of the Seraphim or not? I really want to know every single thing in the comments below. Anyway guys, thank you so much for watching this video until the very end. I hope you liked it, I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope we'll see you in the next one. Bye! Smarter, baby, smarter, smarter, baby, smarter.